test mic or to free my test as well. Good day class. Uh, it's such a blessing to be able to share with you once again our lesson for today. Our lesson for today, I will be talking about uh, two topics uh, today. The first topic would be women in the law, and the second one is violence against women and children. So we will start with this women and the law. Uh, lesson one the tips are more about the bias told in law affecting, sorry, that's affecting, affecting women. Identify the various rights of women. And understand the impact of this loss in the lives of Filipino women in society. So, last time we learned about the culture of the culture of the gold and then the society. So, we'll be learning now about uh, what are the laws that have been stipulated in the Constitution regarding you know, for women and how. Rights impact women. Let's define these terms. 1987 Constitution, the fundamental law of the country upon which all the laws are implied in this. So, uh, the basis of the, our study of the laws we will be studying is based on the 1987 Constitution. We also have the Magna Carta of women, the main law in enshrining all the rights of women and the laws in building the nation. Nation building, collaborative efforts, and means to establish and develop uh, the country. So, 1987 Constitution. So, the Philippines is known for its very liberal and progressive constitution. Right? Because in 1987, that our constitution was, uh, was, was developed, amended, and um, acted. So, it was formulated during the euphoria of the People Power Revolution in 1986, right? So gender equality is a key element of this charter and is enshrined in Article 2, Section 14 of the 1987 Constitution. The state recognizes the role of women in nation building and shall ensure the fundamental equality before the law of women. I would repeat that. Article 2, Section 14 of the 1987 Constitution. The state recognizes the role of women in nation building and shall ensure the fundamental equality for the law of women. And yeah. so considering the unequal gender relations in the country, right? And the constitution okay, further provided for women representation it was one of the nine marginalized sectors in the religious literature through the party list system. So we have a party list system. And uh, yes, it's marginalized before to, to cover 80% of the lower house. Finally, Article 13, Section 14 specifically mentioned that the state shall protect uh, working women by providing safe and helpful working conditions, taking into account their mater maternal functions and such facilities and opportunities that will enhance their welfare and enable them to realize their full potential in the service of the nations. Now, I want to ask you this question. So I'll be giving you about, about 10 minutes to answer these questions. I want you to reflect on these following questions. Please get one half sheet of paper and then answer these questions for about 10 minutes. This is an essay, essay, uh, essay questions. So first is, what do you think are the reasons, okay, why these provisions should be enshrined in our 1997 constitution, right? Second, 
which among these constitutional provisions are the most important? Provide the reasons. And last, do you think these constitutional provisions are lacking or already sufficient? Provide your reasons. So um, I want you to, to what's this? Uh, let me paste the the articles, okay, so that you will be able to uh, yeah. Anyway, so this is the okay, this is the these are the questions for your uh, proposal. Now again, uh, so that you'll be able to to understand uh, the provisions. I will be reading it. Let's see. I will paste it first and then read it for you. The screen now. Okay. So here are the questions, all right. What do you think are the reasons why this provision should be enshrined in the 1987 Constitution provision for, for women? And which among these constitutional provisions are the most important? And do you think these constitutional provisions are lacking or already sufficient? So these are the provisions, okay. And number one is the state recognize the role of women in nation building and shall ensure the fundamental equality before the law. So equality before the law, women and men, okay? Uh, second provision, the state shall protect working women by providing safe and helpful working conditions, taking into account their maternal functions and such facilities and opportunities that will enhance their welfare and enable them to realize the full potential the service. So the second, second provision is about working for uh, women, that's why Right now, I think we have already like three months maternal leave, right? So that's one. So, so these are the provisions, okay? <clears throat> and uh, yeah, the party system also is one of the provisions. So I want you to answer this for about 10 minutes. Just get one half sheet of paper and answer this for about uh, this, uh, 10 minutes, okay? Thank you.
the last two minutes. Last two minutes. Okay, so we're done. So this specific provision served as basis to several legislations about women. As a result, laws of women became plenty, apart from the constitutional provisions mentioned. So the lack of sufficiency of the specific provisions depends on the existing and current need of the country. Now we have these various laws promoting gender equality. Okay, so the legal framework provided by the 1997 Constitution resulted to various legislations promoting gender equality, right? So these legislations include the following, okay? So number one is Local Government Code of 1991. So what is this Local Government Code of 1991? It provides for the election of sectoral representation, including women in local legislative councils. Now, in, in, in the local government, right, in the municipality or the city level, we have uh, legislators. And it is, these legislators are mostly, I think these are the councillors, city councillors or municipal councillors. So this women should be represented in, in the legislation, the legislative body. Second is part in this law, provides the creation of women oriented or women based parties to compete under the party system. Women is one of the nine sectors identified with that. I think we have the Gabriela. Gabriela, I think one of the, this is part of this women part of this in, in, in the Congress. So we have the part of this law. And we have Labor Court of 1989. This covers issues such as night work prohibition, specifies that employers must provide special facilities for women, prohibition of discrimination against women in respect to terms and conditions of employment, and prohibition of discrimination by reason of marriage of a woman worker. Okay. And we also have women in nation building law, the Public Act 7192, 1991. It is an act of promoting the integration of women as full and equal partners of men in development and nation building. So uh, men and women are equal, especially in promoting the welfare of, of, of a nation. So the law provides that a substantial portion of government resources be utilized to support programs and activities for women. And the law also encourages the full participation and involvement of women in the government. 
is uh, in the development process and to remove all gender bias and all governmental regulations and procedures. So in relation to gender budgeting, the law specifically in the agencies are already a minimum of 5% to increasing to 30% of all official development funds in mainstream gender concerns. So in the gender concerns mainstream programs, uh, there should be uh, equal appropriation, at least, you know, uh, right amount for, for women programs. And you have the 1988 Comprehensive Agrarian Reform Law. It gave women the right to own land previously reverted to sons and other male family members. So it's, 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 it's a law for women to be able to, 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 acquire, to, to, to have a property, especially how is this uh, the right to own land. Republic Act 7688 of 1994, an act giving representation to women in social security commission. And you have the anti-sexual harassment law, RL 7877, an act where sexual harassment to be unlawful in the employment, education, or training environment. We have Republic Act 7822, an act providing assistance to women engaging in micro and package business and enterprise. And you have Republic Act 8353, 1997, an act expanding the definition, definition of crime of rape, reclassifying the same as crime against uh, persons. And these laws not only promote gender equality, but also gives protection to women's rights and enhances women empowerment. Okay. Now the laws listed above you should always be remembered since these are the very basic laws on women's rights and women empowerment. Women's rights and women empowerment are very important in the society as this ensures the inclusive growth and development. Now we also have these national programs. Okay? So based on the Philippine law stated, a myriad of projects and initiatives and processes on the gender challenge arose. So this includes the following programs. Number one is Philippine Plan for Gender Responsive Development uh, of 1995 to 2025. The National Plan for Women that consolidates the action commitments of the Philippines during the Beijing World Conference on Women. So this is the overall frame, but it's also the point of reference for the discussions and monitoring of gender mainstreaming. And you have gender and development budget, or GAD, GAD, integral to the national plan. It is aimed at institutionalizing gender concerns in the mainstream development process. And agenda and address peripheral programs and projects out of the government. So, you know, this is uh, signalizing uh, women concerns so that it cannot be a marginalized thing, but it could be part of the mainstream. So, completely, it describes the allocation of 5% of the government's agency's local government needs budget, 5% in gender responsive activities and projects. As a result, implementation of development programs and policies of government also means women participating in role in governance. Primarily stakeholders in the development process. Women have the right to maximize their involvement in governance, be it at a local or national level. And you have the framework plan for women of PW. This is part of the Philippine plan for women developed to focus on three thrusts. Number one, promoting women's dynamic empowerment, advance and protect women's rights, and promote gender responsive governance. So this plan identifies the complete gender issues that will get us in point targets, indicators, main programs, formulates the implementation plan, and set up tools for monitoring. Then we have women's right to participate. Women's right to vote was granted in 1947, as I already said before. The Constitution of 1935 stipulated that the rights of suffrage would be extended to women. Only if 300,000 women voted in its favor during a national plebiscite. Okay. Uh, this consolidated the emerging women's movement and brought to the fore the activities on the women such as Concepcion, Felix de Calderon, who formed the Association Feminista Filipina in June 1905. And you have Rose Sibila de Alvero, a young Trinidad Almeda. 
Miss Constantia Pagliate, founder of Liga Fit ni Nina de la Paz. And we have Pura Villanueva, Alao and Paz Mendoza Bauzon, Pura Villanueva, the president of the National Federation of Women's Clubs, and the South Carolina Squad, the president of the Girl Scouts of the Philippines, and the United States of America, and the United States of America. So the General Council was established in Manila. The General Council of Women it was then established in Manila to direct the plebiscite campaign. Its aim was to grow the support of the broadcast number of women as it turned out to be 447,700 women voted yes in the 1937 plebiscite. Interestingly, 44,207 women voted against the petition. The crowd was a part of the Israel Women's Foray and the various levels of electoral but generally, it's the familiar nation and it is also, of course, later on, and the first women president, the first one, you know. At present, women's right to vote and participate and maintain and further protect the existing laws. Then we have women's involvement in civil society. Okay, so women's rights and the state of women's involvement in uh, civil uh, society. Women's expression and involvement in civil society could be through organizing around gender specific issues and formation of all women groups within God coalitions, power enhancing mechanisms, and the groups of the feminist movement, with the Gabriela, right, very popular, the Indigenous Political, the Pilos Cabarro, Access to Storage and Civil, the so called Philippine Angel Voting Support Board. If you go on the National Student Council and close to the United Nations Conference on Women, right? So let's go to women and education. So the Philippine education is a combination of public and private institutions, which the state providing free education for elementary and secondary levels. The institution provides without limiting the natural rights of parents to rear their children elementary so that there's no general discrimination of girls in education. Thus, there is no marked difference existing in the educational status of Filipino, Filipino women and men. One glaring issue is the gender stereotyping of fields of study and specialization and its own translation to the world of work, where men generally occupy the highest professional ranks and the highest paid positions. So women's larger responsibility for housework and for the family needs the ability to use their educational training skills for the new and work services. So this was the case. Right? Since most men hold the position in the government sector, the educational sector. So the topics previously discussed are always timely, relevant, and part and parcel of the daily lives of the Filipinos. So this only shows the degree of importance must be given to this and the topics. So to summarize, laws on Filipino women are plenty. From the fundamental law of the land of existing legislations. So it can be projected that more such legislation shall arise in the future. So these laws are essential as they can be springboards of various national programs, human involvement, participation, and inclusion of all towards the highest goal of power. So our next topic is entitled the violence against women and their children. So we already talk about women and the law, how our constitution stipulated laws for equality and to be able to give rights to women. Let's go to violence against women. We call this vows the AWC, violence against women and children of the AWC 1962. Our last one objective is to discuss important provision of the AWC Act or RA 9262 understand the details of this commission and comprehend the actual cases involved in the said law. So we have here a definition of terms, protection orders issued by the barangay or the courts, distancing the law perpetrator from the victim to the perpetrator, the victim and vice versa for the reasons provided by the law. A decline, nature of the crime wherein it is considered to be a crime to the society allowing anyone who has Mm, personalized the violence the AWC. So, the Republic of 1962 for anti violence against women. So, this is anti violence against women and children. 2004 is a result of strong advocacies on women's rights, 
in the country. So this law was deemed to be significant victory for all Filipino women as it was based on the right of women to suffer abuse or discrimination and violence in their respective relationship. So there are uh, important features okay, for this anti-violence against women. Okay, number one, four kinds of violence against women and children are defined. So we have the law defined four kinds of violence. It's physical, psychological, sexual, and economic. So in its efforts to encompass all types of abuses inflicted to women and their children, and also a BAWC is a public crime. So the crime is per perpetrated not only against a single individual, but against the entire society. Thus, anyone who has personal knowledge of the abuse, the violence, or discrimination can file a complaint. Number three, protection orders can be issued against the perpetrator. Compiling the case, the victim or the survivor, or anyone who has personal knowledge, and apply for a protection order, right? And this way, the NDI gives this protection order. To enforce distance between her and that of the paper. And you have number four, stronger community mechanism to respond to cases. Now, uh, various government agencies are mandated to, to actively respond or formulate mechanism to respond to the reported violence against women and children immediately. Okay? So, uh, protection orders. So we also have these protection orders. So our protection order under the anti-BWAC is defined, okay, it is defined as an order for the purpose of preventing further acts of violence against women and child, specified in section of this act and granting other necessary relief. So the relief granted under a protection order should serve the purpose of safeguarding the victim, minimizing any disruption, in the victim's daily life and facilitating the opportunity and ability of the victim to independently gain control of it. So the law means the following reliefs that may be availed for protection. So these are the relief that you can avail you know, for the protection order. One prohibition of respondent from telling to commit or committing personal or to any acts of violence. Then number two, prohibitions of the respondent from harassing, annoying, telephony from Victim or survival directly or directly. Number three, removal and exclusion of responding from the residence of the petitioner, whether temporarily or permanently. And then directing the respondent to stay away from the petitioner. Okay? And directly lawful possession and use to the petitioner of an automobile and other personal effects, regardless of ownership. And then granting temporary or permanent custody of the children. Okay? So children. And directing the respondent to provide support to the woman or the child with the child the level support. Then, number eight, prohibition of the respondent from any use or possession of firearm or deadly weapon in order to surrender the same, including the revocation of license, disqualification. And then, number nine, restitution for actual damages caused by violence inflicted with property damage, medical expense, and the use of income. And directing the WDSWD, the Family Social Development, or any other agency to provide. Temporary shelter and other social services that um, may be needed. And the provision of other forms of relief may be necessary to protect and provide the safety. And you also have the rights of victims, okay, of a victim or the survivor. And that is to be treated with respect and dignity, to avail legal assistance from the public authorities office and the public about the Department of Justice or any legal assistance. And to be entitled to support services from the SWD. To all be used in order to be entitled to all legal remedies and support as provided for and under the family code, and to be informed of the right to apply for protection order, and then the right to privacy of the victim is also provided in the law. These violations punishable by imprisonment. So, uh, the duties of national and local governments. What is the duty of national and local government? Uh, again, was this to help? Uh, women and children. Section 39 of RA 962 provides for the creation of interagency council on violence against women and children, which will formulate gender sensitive programs and projects according to the respective agency mandates, including capability for the building of programs for the employees. So the EIC or BAWC consists of the following agencies of the BSWD, the National Commission on the Law of Women. Civil Service Commission, Commission on Human Rights, 
Council for the Work of Children, Department of Justice, Department of the Department of Government, the ALJ, we have the Court of National Police, the Department of Health, the Department of Education, the Department of Labor and Employment, and the National Bureau of Investigation. So they, the implementing rules and regulations of the anti uh, children Act state the following duties and responsibilities of, of the barangays in addressing the AWP support from the insurance and government of section 27 duties. So we, we go now, we now go to the local level to the barangay what other duties to protect violence against women and children. So undertake education program for violence against women to so, so educate, okay? Second, our family violence prevention program, including peer counseling for men. So men should be, should be, should be, should be counseled, should be educated, so as not to uh, this uh, violent rights of women and children. Third, support organizing efforts and development programs for women in the community. Third, prioritize livelihood projects for victims and survivors, who sometimes know there's no support for, for the victims. And then involve women in planning and implementation of all programs and projects in the Bandai. And have an anti AWC desk officer in the Bandai, which is a one stop office. Then should be available for them for hours. Ensure that all barangay officials, barangay health workers, barangay patients, as other barangay workers, and the Tanod, so the others, and local gender sensitive seminars, enable them to respond to the victims' violence. Without a system, document and report cases, assistance program for victims are applicable and necessary to prescribe additional guidelines provided for the system. So I will also be sharing to you later on some new goal, perhaps, yes, a new goal. Cases, okay, actual cases of violence against women and children. I will ask you to reflect on the problem. So, we will be also in the middle. Okay, so to summarize, the Violence Against Women and Children Act is a landmark legislation championing the cause of women, and these specific laws pertain to specific violations captured as acts of violence defined in the law. Also, violence against women and children was considered to be a public crime allowing other persons to file the complaint, only the victim or the survivor. Further, the law allows protection orders distancing the perpetrator from the victim and vice versa. Several purposes provided for So importantly, government units are mandated to provide specific and immediate mechanism to respond appropriately to this violence against women and children. So I think, uh, the bottom line is this you have to respect the rights of others, especially women, mothers, sisters. Okay, so God has made all gender equal, and so we have to protect, we have to serve, we have to, to always think of the welfare of the other individual, to be able to not to, to, to violate the rights, to be able to have this mutual respect. You to understand me. All right. So thank you for listening to our discussion and that means our discussion support uh, Thursday. Please continue to do your uh, assessment. I'll be posting the assessment for this class and also participating in the forum. Then do your maybe activities on Thursday and also check the comments. Okay. So our examination. I will not be including this topic today for our examination. As I had already stipulated, uh, uh, the coverage of the examination, right? So uh, I will give you the, uh, this uh, update. And, uh, thank you, everybody, for listening to our discussion. And I guess everyone, uh, thank you. And,